Good morning, First Baptist. We're still in the COVID, COVID-19, so I hope everybody's following the protocol. I'm going to take off my hat, and I'm going to take off my mask, and we're going to get started with Sunday School. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Unfortunately, my mom passed 25 years ago, but she's still with me every day. I have a talk with her every day. The lesson today is coming out of the Old Testament again in the book of Zechariah, the 8th chapter, verses 1 through 17. We're going to call it Justice and Peace. <clears throat> Last week, we shared the vision of Zephaniah, of how God was going to restore his people. It was the vision of the future. There was a new world and a new peace and a new prosperity that's awaiting us all. And he gave us a strong prophecy about this. He gave us hope. Remember, we did an acronym for hope. Helping other people endure. Today, we're going to examine another prophet, and his name starts with a Z, and that is Zechariah. Zechariah name means that the Lord remembers. He was the son of a priest and the grandson of a priest named Idu, I-D-D-O. <clears throat> and his family was one of the priestly families that returned from exile. And that's found in Nehemiah 12, verses 4 and 16. And then there were 20 years, I said 20 years, that the temple had remained in ruins. Remember the temple was the brainchild of the great David in the Old Testament, but he never got a chance to build it because God said his son would build it, and his son Solomon later built the temple. It was magnificent. People came from all over. Well, the temple was destroyed years later by, the by God's evil <clears throat> enemies. And in Ezra 3, there was a remnant of Jews that arrived back into the Holy Land and they restored, well, at least started to restore the altar of the temple, but they just had too many distractions and they never finished. So here the temple is remaining in ruins for this 20 year period. So Zechariah, we're gonna call him Brother Z. Brother Z came on the scene to encourage the Jews to rebuild the temple. Now there was another prophet, Haggai at that time, he had promised the Jews that there would be an end to their crop failures and their economic misery, saying that from this day forward, God will bless you. And that's in Haggai 2.19. Now, going back to Brother Z, Brother Z promised that the people, they promised that they would have a Messiah. And the return to those glorious days of King David. And you know, King David was a man after God's own heart. And Brother Z inspired the people to rebuild the temple. So just before we get into the lesson, I just have to tell you, I just celebrated my birthday right on Friday, May the 8th. And I tell you, when I think about birthdays, there are two scriptures in the Bible that talk about birthdays. One is in the Old Testament in Genesis. Genesis 40, starting at verse 20. It was Pharaoh's birthday. And you may recall the story, Joseph was in jail and he was interpreting dreams and he was going to tell what happened to the baker when he got out of jail. Well, if you know the story, Pharaoh had his head cut off. And then there's another story in Matthew 14, starting at the sixth verse. And this is the birthday party of Herod. And he was enthralled and just having a good time watching the lady, the lady, the young lady dance. And he basically said, I'll give you anything you want. And she ran to her mom, mom, what should I ask for? And she said, what? I want the head of John the Baptist. And of course, King Herod he had to keep his word, and John the Baptist was in jail at that time, and they bore her to head. So the story is, 
The theme is, when you have your birthday and you're celebrating, don't lose your head. All right? Now let's get to the lesson. Zechariah 8 speaks about God's promise of restoration. You know, very similar to the theme of last week. The enemies were still trying to discourage them from building the temple, and the Jews just, just lost hope and never got it done. But one thing about Satan, he is always there trying to dissuade you, trying to destroy you, trying to tear you down and have all this hate all in the world. But, you know, there is someone that just loves us tremendously, and that's Jesus Christ. So we're going to start with verses 1 and 2. And we're going to call this, God is jealous. One says, again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous in Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. See, in Zechariah 1, Zechariah the prophet makes it known that he is not speaking on his own, but he is speaking the words of the Lord. And when we start in chapter 8, we see that there are 10 promises of blessings, 10, each beginning with the phrase, thus saith the Lord of hosts, if you're reading the King James Version, or this is what the Lord says in the NIV Version. And I wrote up here on the board on this side these different verses that all talk about these promises, or we'll call them blessings. Now, in our lesson, seven of the blessings are discussed in today's lesson. So blessing number one is, on the board, God is jealous. Jealousy, or jealous, means to be very watchful, careful, in guarding or keeping your rights, requiring exclusivity, just like in a marriage, one and one. No swinging around, whatever they do. God created marriage, it was Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, all right? He's looking for loyalty to him. Our God is a jealous God. In fact, he is named jealous in the Bible. I wrote up here on the board, Exodus 34, 14. It says, for thou shalt worship no other God for the Lord, whose name is jealous, is a jealous God. You can also go back and look at Exodus 20. 3 and 5 talks about how he is a jealous God because he wants us to just focus on him. We can get so distracted with Satan out there doing all these crazy things, but we got to stay focused on the Lord. 2 Corinthians is marked up here. 11.2 says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealous. See, godly jealous and our jealous are two different things. So we kind of, we tend to just go off on a tangent. But God says, For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. God wants us to focus on him. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, God desires his children to be faithful. No other gods before me, he says. No American idols. Not the, sing the singers, but any kind of idols. We have to focus on our Heavenly Father. Not athletes, you know, not politicians, etc. Our focus has to be on the Lord. Amen? God desires to be the only God receiving worship. Because he is jealous. I'll read that again. God desires to be the only God receiving worship. When we worship the one true God, there is hope for our future. As God protected his people from the surrounding nations, God will protect his children today from the evil in the world. Evil like viruses and all these things that are going on right now. 
All right. Let's look at verses 3 through 8. Blessing number two is God will return and he will dwell among us. The verse says, Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. See, God's people are going to return to Jerusalem and they're going to rebuild, rebuild the temple. The people will be restored to Jerusalem and there will be once again peace and growth in the city. A city he called true life. A city of truth. Hope will once again be abounding. Ezekiel 43, 1 through 5, which is on the board, talks about a promise to return to Jerusalem. In addition, God says he will dwell in the midst. He's going to be there right with us. God's present Presence will be there with the renaming of the city as well to a city of truth. And the mountain of the Lord will once be, again be called the holy mountain as it was in the early part of the Old Testament. So the renaming of both the city and the mountain emphasizes the idea of uncompromised loyalty to God. This is true faithfulness. This is what God seeks from all of us, his children. It's just like in any marriage. True faithfulness keeps that marriage going strong. Verse 4 says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, There shall not yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand for very age. For the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets. The, second, the third blessing is called long life and security on the board. Life will return to the city. The men and the women will love long lives. In verse 5 it says the city will be full of boys and girls playing in the streets. Does that remind you when you were younger I know we grew up in, my sisters and I grew up in Washington, D.C., and we had all kinds of games that we would play in the streets, on the sidewalk, you know, from double dutch, and the girls were playing that, and jumping in, and you had jacks, and you had all kinds of ball that we played, basketball, football, baseball, all kinds of things like that. But we had some special games, too, like hot, hopscotch, and dodgeball, and and when it was snowing outside, we'd get the sleigh or, or a trash can top and we slide down the hill. I mean, we did all kind of board games, hide and seek. But one thing about it is this. When you're young or if you're old, we should both be striving during that time period. It shows that the population is doing well. Rather than measuring the city on how we're doing in business or commerce, we should measure it by the wealth of these two groups, the old and the young. The significance of our cities here is measured by their effect on how the young and the old interact. All right. Blessing number four. Blessing number four is God is marvelous. There was a, a comedian back in the day that he would just say, simply marvelous. Do you know who that was? Yeah, some of you know that was Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal. The verse 6 says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, it, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in my eyes, said the Lord of hosts? Marvelous is extraordinary. It's amazing, unbelievable, wonderful, glorious, beautiful, and more. I mean, simply marvelous. You can just describe almost anything as marvelous if you look at it a certain way. But you have to imagine that even though it's full of joy and without concerns of evil looking around the corner. So this is what our future is being laid out for. 
Our future is going to be marvelous. So we have to prepare ourselves. We should be reading God's word daily. Even if it's just one verse, allow it to speak to you. I mean, sometimes you might want to just look at the daily bread daily. You can grab one of those. But whatever it is, the day can go by so fast. If you don't stop in the morning and say a prayer to the Lord, read a verse or something like that. <clears throat> My wife and I, before we go to work, we read the daily bread. You know, we take turns. She'll read one day and I'll read the next day. Just to get the day started. We have to do that. The God Almighty can do what the remnant of his people thinks is impossible. There is nothing, I said nothing too hard for the Lord, found in Genesis 18, 14. But see, doubt often weakens our faith and it causes us to look at false gods, other gods for support. That's where these idols and things come in. So we've got to be aware of that. Blessing number five says, the Lord saves and protects. Verse 7 and 8 say, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. And then 8 says, And I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. God promises to save his people from the east to the west. In other words, everywhere, everywhere, God will speak to you. He is going to return his people to Jerusalem where they will live. He is going to bring them back. Remember that song, Take Me Back, Dear Lord? Take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. All right. God will hear their God. He will be their God and they will be his people. They will live in truth and righteousness. This example takes us back to the promise of Abraham in Genesis 17, 8, where God said, I will be your God. Romans 8, 31 on the board says, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's what God has made it very simple for us. When God has your back, we cannot be destroyed. Now, verses 9 and 10 are not printed in our lesson, but we, I place them here for one particular reason. There's a blessing in number 6. It says, let your hands be strong. And it also refers back to verse 13 that we're going to come to. Verse 9 and 10 read, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. Ye that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. Verse 10, for before these days there was no hire for man, nor any hire for beast. Neither was there any peace in him that went or went in or came out because of the affliction. For I set every man one against the, uh, against the other or against his neighbor. So before this time, before the temple was built, there was no work. Does this sound like today with this COVID going on? People are running crazy. I looked, at, looked it up this past week in terms of the jobless claims that have been filed since this started, and this is only through April 25th, 5,750,000 jobless claims just this year, since this started. That's through April 25th. Unemployment. People are losing their houses. They're losing their minds, and we need to stand up and be there if we can. God loves his people. His love for Christians is just as passionate today as it was for his chosen people, the Israelites. We can only imagine the grief and the causes that causes God's heart to hurt too when we turn away from him. 
So after this season of what we're going through, God loves, still compels him to restore us. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to bless all his children. Now in verse 11, it reads, But now I will not be unto the residue of this people, as in the former days, says the Lord of hosts. For the seed will be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase. And the heavens shall give their due, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. So now we have the temple being rebuilt and worship being restored as before. Things are going to change. When we decide to follow the Lord, things will be changing in our lives. We're going to inherit in blessings that we could never imagine. But we have to have that one little five little word, faith. We've got to have faith. So have you ever been through a low period in your life? You know, someone close to you died or, you know, you lost a loved one and you just were upset about it and couldn't seem to get out of that funk. Well, once you make it through that low, that low period in your life, you will be restored. Your prayer life is going to be restored. God has his eyes on you. He sees the goodness in you. And we're going to be given trial, but we have to know where the source of our strength is, always. Now, looking at verse 13, it reads, And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and the house of Israel, so I will save you. And ye shall be a blessing, fear not, but let your hands be strong. Israel was like a curse. They were just a laughing joke back then, back in the day between all the different nations. But now the Lord is going to reverse it. And you're going to see it. The other nations will wonder, why is Israel being treated so well by his God? God says that he is going to save you. He is going to allow you to be the blessing. We should not fear anything, and we should go about serving the Lord with diligence. Diligence. Strong hands. Representing the Lord. Nothing will happen overnight, but we have to remain diligent. All right. The next blessing, blessing number seven, is God did not punish. They're all listed on the board here behind me. Verse 14 says, For thus said the Lord of hosts, As I thought to punish you, when your fathers provoked me to wrath, said the Lord of hosts, I repented not. It is not a good feeling for a child, when you know you have done something evil, something wrong, maybe to a friend or to another, and your parents learn about it, and you didn't tell them about it, they confront you, what are they going to ask? My father would say, bring me the switch. Bring me the switch. And of course, I went out in the yard to get the smallest stick I could find, the smallest little branch I could find. <laughs> and that's just what's happened in the past, and we've all been through something like that. But here God is saying, punishment or not, his goal is to bless Israel and its people. He tells them not to be afraid. Put your faith in him because he is the one true God and he is the promise maker. We got to note here that when the word says repented, it is not the normal sense of regret of having been you know, sinful. God is sinless. We serve a God that is sinless. Rather, the idea is more of comfort. He is going to comfort us when we have sinned if we go to him. The last three verses offer a summary of what we have just discussed. Verses 15, 16, and 17 read as follows. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah, Fear ye not. These are the things that ye shall do. It says, speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Always be truthful, the scripture is saying. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates, in your homes. Verse 17 says, and let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against your neighbor." Against a loved one, no false oath. For these are the things that I hate, says the Lord. 
We talked about hate a little bit last week, the last two weeks. God's people must reflect his character in their relationships. This is why the themes judgment and peace turn up again and again in our lessons. We have to shake God's hand in this. We ought to do well. We have to represent God faithfully. The Lord calls the people to put their trust in God's faithfulness. He had to make a promise and it would be fulfilled. So help me God. There's nothing better than to speak the truth. We are to eliminate evil in our hearts and substitute the evil with love. So God spoke about those seven things in Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, we shared last week, but three of them said, God despises a lying tongue, tongue, a heart that devises wicked imaginations and a false witness that speaks lies. So we have to continue to speak on all things with love because love never fails. So when you're looking at a relationship, when a relationship goes from bad to good, someone has to make the first move. Somebody has to do it. God, in his compassion, took the initiative for promising the great things to his people. He is determined to redeem all who are willing to acknowledge him as sovereign Lord. The question is, do you acknowledge him? Let us pray. Lord, we acknowledge your presence and praise and thank you today just, just for being in the midst this morning. Just to share with us why you are a jealous God. Continue to walk with us daily. In Jesus' name, amen. One quick thing, just a little something to make you smile. An elderly woman was well known for her faith and her boldness in talking about it. She would stand on the porch and shout, praise the Lord. Next, next door to her lives an atheist who would get so angry he would shout, there is no God. Hard time set in, COVID-19, I guess, and she prayed for God to send her some assistance. She stood on her porch and shouted, praise the Lord. God, I need food. I'm having a hard time. Please send me some groceries. The next morning, the woman went out on the porch and saw a large bag of groceries and shouted, praise the Lord. The neighbor jumped out behind the bush and said, I told you there was no God. I bought you those groceries myself. The woman started jumping up and down and screaming and hollering, clapping her hands. She said, praise the Lord. Not only did you send me groceries, but you made the devil pay for them. Amen. All right. Woo! Brother Tilson, signing off. <laughs>